Hi, my name is Mary Waller and I'm a professor at York University in Toronto. Together with Seth Kaplan from George Mason University, I recently completed a study of mine rescue teams from Ontario Mine Rescue and I'd like to tell you a little bit about the study. Mine rescue teams are the teams of highly trained volunteers at Ontario Mine Rescue who go into mines during emergency situations such as fires, floods, cave-ins to rescue trapped personnel. Every year, Ontario Mine Rescue holds an annual provincial competition. Typically, one mine rescue team from each of the seven districts comes to that annual provincial competition to compete in a simulation that is very complex and very involved, typically taking place underground in a mine. These simulations involve multiple emergency scenarios or episodes that the teams have to face and deal with. So with 21 teams, our data set is, comprises about 42 emergency episodes. But th before the teams even go into the simulation and they go into the simulation one at a time, all of the team members get together the day before uh, the provincial competition and write an exam. The exam takes about 30 minutes and tests their declarative knowledge of mine rescue team procedures and protocols. Then for two days, each team goes into the mine one at a time and performs during this very complex, stressful two to three hour simulation. At every step along the way, each team is observed by multiple expert observers. In fact, most of the simulations have over 40 expert observers stationed along the way, rating each team on a variety of different measures. After each team has gone through the simulation, these expert observers meet, discuss what they saw, share their notes, and arrive at performance evaluations on a variety of different dimensions for each team. In fact, each emergency episode faced by the team has a performance measure agreed to associated with it. Now to get at the process that was going on inside each one of these teams during the competition, we attached very small USB stick sized digital audio recording devices to the inside brim of each of the helmets of each team member. For this particular study, we focused on the audio, re audio recordings of the captains of each team. Now, even though their digital audio recorders were attached to their helmets, we could still hear the conversations that the captains had with other team members and with the briefing officer, the member of the team that is waiting on the surface to give the captain directions and extra information if that's needed. So our final data set included the performance ratings for each emergency episode faced by a team as well as all of the audio recordings for each individual team member for every team. Although for this particular study we focused on those audio recordings from the team captains. We used these data to examine the relationship between team episodic performance and the captain's interactions inside and outside team boundaries during these emergency episodes. We found that teams scoring higher on episode performance had captains who tended to engage in more participative, balanced interaction during decision making, but who tended to be more directive once the decisions were made. These captains also engaged in more information gathering from the briefing officers and in classic boundary spanning fashion exhibited more of a flow of focusing inside and outside the team and being able to bounce back and forth between inside and outside of the team. For myself and Seth, it's been an incredibly exciting opportunity to see mining operations up close and in person and to be able to spend time with the people who volunteer to serve as team members for Ontario Mine Rescue. For me personally, this has been the most positive experience I've had in 20 years of doing field research in team dynamics. 
the people at Ontario Mine Rescue did everything they possibly could to make sure we were getting access to the data we needed, that we had the information we needed, and they really made us feel like we were somehow part of their family. Hopefully the work that we've done and the work that we'll continue to do with Ontario Mine Rescue will add to the organization in a positive way and help them sustain and even enhance the effectiveness of these truly incredible teams.